Hi, my name is Marvin Harrison and I'm the founder of the Dope Black Dad podcast and I'm rewinding back to my first words with ACAST. So I've been podcasting for three and a half years. It is the best thing. If someone, if I could live my whole life just podcasting and live, live off podcasting forever, I would. The very first words of like, this is the Dope Black Dad podcast. My name is Marvin Harrison and I'm here today with that took me so long to nail and get comfortable with. And I remember trying to get it down, but also trying to make it sound relaxed and like I was breathing while I was talking. And then I remember we we tried to have sounds. And so we had like a maracas, a thimble and a triangle. And so it was like this really awkward sound of like people in an empty hollow room, like shaking these instruments. And it didn't add much. It actually was a huge distraction. Hello everyone, this is the Dope Black Dad podcast. That was a mouthful. Boy! Tons of enthusiasm this morning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> no, not yet. We're, we're going to get there. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so, even though we were in a music studio, the sound was not very good. We hired this really expensive studio to try and do it in and they misbriefed it. And so they didn't have four microphones or three microphones. So we ended up doing it all on one. And so you can just hear the roominess in it. But the only good thing that I really remember from that podcast is that I was doing it with like my closest friends. So Chris and Darwood I've known for like 15 to 20 years. We just had the most fun talking about any and everything. That moment, I, I really remember just being like super, super nervous because I'd never spoken in a recorded format like that before. What had basically happened is we had created this WhatsApp group and it was going very well. As in like, it was full of people and nobody left. And then it was just like, I'm learning about my friends and men in a way that I've never learned about them before. And I was actually quite excited. I was like, I want to talk about this. It's weird to find a subject that you care about enough to speak for hours and hours and hours on. Like it came from my heart. The whole podcast is just from me and my heart. It's nothing to do with like, we thought this was going to be the biggest thing. I, I don't think I've ever checked the actual numbers on our podcast. Cause I'm like, am I inspired by the conversation? But just, just, just to quickly go, because why, why we're here. So we started the uh, Dope Black Dad WhatsApp group. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's, that, that started on Father's Day. You started it. I started it. Yes, yeah. thank but you. It, it's, it's, oh, thank you. It's, it's the credit. worst. A holiday in the world. I think I think it's below pretty much every other national holiday on earth. So the fact that I was like actually on that day, I was like, I'm going to celebrate other black dads on that day. Mm -hmm. And so I added like 20 black dads that I knew and just said, thank you for your contribution. You are amazing. Mm -hmm. And we should all give ourselves a pat on the back. <laughs> so it was a real sense of incompletion with like how we felt about Father's Day, how I felt. And I really hate taking credit for founding Dope Black Dads because I didn't find it. I didn't like create it with any form of intention. Like some people like create a, a charity or a nonprofit with a clear aim to help children or women. And I was just like, I'm sad. <laughs> and I, this thing is difficult and please help. And so when I, when I made it, it was about me. I didn't make it with a single person in mind. So me talking about Father's Day and being like, it's the worst holiday. That's how I feel. I feel like it's one of those holidays that come up that people don't make adjustments for. Like going back to that time, I can feel what that feeling was. And I remember it of just feeling slightly othered. So yeah, I'm, I'm married as well. I've been married for five years, five and a half years now. I have a three-year-old and an eight-month-old. Um, and uh, actually, just, I was just thinking just now about um, parenting and two kids under five is the best and worst thing you could ever do as a human being. And I would definitely go deep into that, but it's, it has been the best for me as a person and my growth, but the worst for like my sanity and my fears, <laughs> my insecurities that like, you have to unpack yeah. a whole le another level of yourself <coughs> when you've got two kids and a boy and a girl as well. Mm. Hey. <laughs> So uh, I'm incredibly proud to be a father. Like it, it's like my superpower. It's one of the things that I'm like, the, I beam the most about. It's the biggest life challenge you're gonna face because you are accountable for human life. And so I really remember that feeling. I have to be honest. But then that also just means you've got to you know, be aware of what you're sharing, what the impact is on people around you and your family and stuff, because I'm talking about what's really going on. 
follow if you have any points you want to bring up or if there's anything that's happening whether you're a mother a dad of any nation or religion uh, feel free to post anywhere that you yeah, see ask us questions. ask questions and we'll, we'll tackle it in the group yeah. uh, in, in the message group beforehand and then bring it into the podcast um, but yeah this is us does anyone have any interesting things to say on the outro Absolutely. I don't have an outro we can be really honest there you go this is our outro thank you very much we'll see you next week yes Listen, this, this might get taken down. We never had an outro. We were just like sitting there thinking, all right, we've finished speaking now and we should say some things. So I tried to like tune in to my inner BBC mantra and think, what would they say at the end of a show? And I was like, call us, email us, if you're from any nationality or ethnicity, uh, if you're a mother, I was rambling. <laughs> but please do call us and email us if you have any questions regarding our podcast or any themes or topic that has arisen in our podcast. So we've gone through many wonderful iterations of our podcast. We've recorded in a room with 19 channels and a, it looked like one of those like music videos from the 90s that Take That would do where we'd have our headphones on and we'd be like big microphone in a roomy room that's being recorded. Someone sliding a button up. We did that in the beginning. Then we moved to like actually just recording on my phone and like we would just put the voice memo and we would all huddle around it and speak at it. We kind of did that for quite a while and then we just started getting into studio and having this amazing audio quality where my voice sounded like this. And then that got taken away because of COVID. And so we went into Zoom and then Zoom is terrible because it compresses audio. Then we went to Riverside, which is better. We kind of did a couple of other ones where we did them in studio with videos and stuff, but largely kind of stuck to Riverside as our way of like doing it. And the main reason is, is because we just get to access more people faster. We can speak to people in South Africa, New York, Jamaica, Canada, and people who are incredibly busy and famous and multifunctional, all those people we can access faster than it is if we do it in person. So, but I think our next iteration will be more visual and we're gonna go back into a more of a studio setup. The community part is the whole thing. Like if there isn't one, then I don't wanna do this and I'll go do other things with my spare time. Actually spending time with real men around the world is like my number one thing to do. Every month we have a dope black fraternity meeting. We also do the retreat. So we all get together and again, like we do things that look after each other. So the last one we had like meditation, we had yoga, conversations about our purpose, our undeclared commitments, just healthy things like that us as men need to discuss. When people come to me and say to me, like, I listen to your podcast, it shapes what we do. And I think we've had most of the conversations we wanted to have from a just like what I think. And now the podcast is very much about like, providing a service to the world. It's like, what do people need to hear, discover, find out about us, our experiences, things that are happening in the wider world. And I'm really honored that our, our podcast matters in that conversation and people reference it as, you know, a tone setter. I'm proud of my earlier episodes. Look, I, I mock them because I know how much we put into it and how far we've come. I don't take it for granted. Like you have to start from somewhere. It's a real thing. Like if I sat there and tried to curate the perfect podcast with the right equipment and the, you know, the perfect producer, I didn't even have a producer at the beginning. It just would never have come out. And there was something that people liked about just the authenticity of us just speaking. And it wasn't pretty and it wasn't overly polished. It was like a private conversation published. And that is what got us the audience that we have. So in many ways, I really honor our beginning roots, but I just find it funny how much I'm now able to say, this is Double Like That Podcast. My name is Marvin Harrison and this is the podcast today featuring, you know, I would never be able to say all of that before. So that's one good thing that's come out of it. It'll make my mother proud, I'm sure. We actually really help people. So when people listen to it and they DM us like really long stories and paragraphs. That's the measure of success for me is like, how many DMs do I get from a podcast? I just care about like helping people and that's what's driven us. So when someone stops me and they're like, I really, episode 37 where you talked about this, that really meant a lot. That's the measure of success because I know there's like fathers being made every day because men haven't stopped trying to pro procreate. So until that time, we will always have a role in society <laughs> and um, we will always, I was gonna say rise to the occasion, but that feels wrong. <laughs> <laughs> My tip for someone who's about to say their first words on their podcast is to just honor yourself. Say your things your way, bring yourself to the podcast and don't really consider the outer world because you will find your tribe 
by just being authentic. Like it's such an important principle and there will be someone who thinks like you, who cares what you have to say and you will find them. But don't try to be anybody else. It's literally your words, your way and just publish it. Don't ponder over the publishing part. This is a look back on my first words with Acast. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you learned something new. If you didn't, then I might have to come back and do it again. But we appreciate you. Make sure you check out the Dope Black Dad podcast on Acast. And also you'll find other podcasts on there as well. But mine's the best. Don't tell anyone.